unfortunately, we can't say that we're growing cage-free lettuce. <laughs> this is not free-range lettuce. I'm so sorry. So if you need free-range lettuce, do not buy from us. Yeah. Also, we're not selling you lettuce. So exactly. Get out of here. Stop. Stop handing us money. I guess if 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 you want to send money, you can let us send you. <laughs> Get out. Bye. Get out of here. So hey guys, uh, today we're gonna introduce you the Weeking Beds. Oh, oh wow. Well. Finish each other's beds. Not prepared to be finishing each other. Weeking Beds. What's Weeking Bed, Jim? Wow, that's a good question, Celine. Thank you. Uh, I didn't know what a Wicking Bed was until two years ago. It's a weird name. Wick, not a common word in the English language. We don't say Wick a lot, maybe when we're talking about candles, and then sometimes with socks. That's pretty much it. We don't really talk about wicking. What does it mean? Not enough. Wicking. Fun fact, know. dictionary definition of wicking is uh, to draw moisture up or away using, I want to say, capillary function motion. So essentially what these beds are is uh, basically planting beds uh, that are self-watering. Uh, Auto-watering. Mm -hmm. We're going to go back in time and explain to you guys why we choose wicking bed. Let's go back in time. This is like the clock going. Yeah. So now we're back in time. The year is 1842. California is not yet a state in the union, but it will be soon. The gold rush. Is it a high, a high gold rushing? <laughs> we went too far. So we want to go forward. Yeah. Well, what year were we aiming for? 2020? Last year. Last year? Okay. The year is 2020. So when we started to, to practice in 2020 together, uh, we wanted to know what kind of uh, uh, bed we can start with, you know, for beginners, uh, something that is easy, etc. And what really helped is permaculture design have the training that uh, uh, help us to choose between the multiple beds and mounts that exist right now according to our criteria and goals. So we tried that training and we end up starting with the lasagna mount, uh, which is a mount very easy to install that last one to two year after sewing that it works very well and we really enjoyed the results uh, we decided to try something different we decided we wanted to grow food closer to the kitchen that was our first criteria and unfortunately this area that's all closer to the kitchen is covered in concrete so that was kind of our first thing we had to overcome the second thing we wanted was something that would be kind of low maintenance easy to maintain and the third thing was something that was kind of elevated uh, so that we could more easily uh, access the fruits and vegetables that we were growing there. And so when we put all of those criteria out there into the world, the answer that came back was in flashing letters, wicking beds. Wicking beds. They'll be flashing. I'm going to add flashing. You don't need to, to say I'm going to add because they're going to see it flashing. You're seeing it right now like through it. the magic of cinema. So the way it works is... Uh, we took an IBC tote that we cut in half and so to have uh, two wicking beds and in the, the bottom of the both wicking beds, so approximately one third, we filled it with gravel. And inside of the gravel, there's a pipe with hole that is running. So there's an end that comes out from the top and end from the bottom. And uh, after that, we put a landscape fabric on top of the gravel and on top of the landscape, uh, we put the dirt uh, where the veg is going to grow. And what it recreates is the water table. We just mimic the, how nature does things. So we create a water reservoir that we fill through the, that uh, pipe that has multiple holes. And the reason we use the landscaping fabric uh, as the dividing line between the reservoir on the bottom and the dirt on top is just to prevent dirt and sediment from getting into that reservoir. We want that to be for the water in particular. Um, and then we also have these little nipples. That's the actual name for them. I'm not being cheeky. They're literally, <laughs> when you look up the designs, they're like, that's a nipple. And you're like, okay, I've never seen a nipple like that. <laughs> but we've got these little nipples down here. Because one of them is about an inch and a half. The other one's about a half inch. So they're one of them smaller than the other. But all of them are beautiful. Mm -hmm. If one of your nipples mm -hmm. is smaller than your other nipple, you shouldn't be ashamed of that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so our nipples do leak. <laughs> 
if it's true, that's literally what they're for. Get back here. <laughs> So the nipples serve a very important function, which is they are essentially the overflow mechanism for our reservoir. We can't have that water filling all the way up and then soaking all the soil. Um, that would prevent oxygen from getting to the roots. It would be all kinds of bad stuff. So what the nipple does is it basically provides a maximum level. Uh, it's at the same height as the reservoir is so that when it ever overfills, let's say it's pouring rain or we accidentally overfill it, uh, the water will just spill out the nipple instead of uh, coming up and filling up the rest of our continents. So nipples, they're important. They're good. Love your nipples. So that's the um, low maintenance in watering. Uh, we have, like, I think in winter, we never uh, fill it with water. Nature does it with the rain. Uh, but during summertime, it depends on the heat. We can fill it, like, uh, in between uh, every week to 10 days. Uh, so it's very uh, low maintenance. And we just uh, put the hose here, and we start the hose, and we wait for it. We can be around doing something else. So the second thing about the wicking bed is low maintenance and fertility, uh, which means we don't need to bring compost every time. We, the, the worms bring back the fertility for us. And the way it works is we installed a, a worm tower in the middle and we use our kitchen scrap. We dump it in the worm tower. And basically the, the part of the worm tower that is underground has hole, we drilled hole in it. And the worms just go inside of the worm tower through those holes. They go eat and then they leave the worm tower and they spread their casting everywhere in the working bed. So um, that's how the fertility comes back. Uh, so it's very low maintenance uh, for that. And we don't dump uh, uh, our scrap in the trash. Yeah, thanks uh, worms. So really quickly, we figured out that the rats had a real liking for this. They would run along the fence, they'd access these beds, um, and they seemed to like it more than they even liked anything in the upper garden. And so very quickly, you would see all of your hard work just disappear in a couple nights when the rats come and eat it. Uh, we also have a no-kill philosophy, so we're not trapping them, we're not killing them. Um, we're just trying to deter them as much as possible, uh, which was pretty hard to do. So this season, that was our big challenge. How do we continue to grow stuff in these beds, grow even more in these beds, but protect it from the rats so that we can actually partake in the stuff that we are growing? And that is why you see these wonderful bad boys behind us here. Uh, we found some designs online. None of them quite worked for us. The major thing that we were looking for is a cage that could fit around our beds that we could also remove most of the sides from it so that we could access all sides of the bed. Because sometimes you have to maintenance the bed. You've got to plant a bunch of stuff. You have to reach back there. We can't just do it with one little flap to be able to reach everything. Um, so we created our own design. So we started with a frame using a two by two for this. We chose Redwood because it's a little more durable. Once the frame was done, we added hardware cloth to the backside, and then we start to work one by one on the four detachable panels. Because we were working with thinner pieces of wood, we used brackets to secure everything together, just to make it as strong as possible. And the final element was adding the hooks on the frame and drilling holes in the panels and then sliding them into place. So on four sides, on all sides except for the back, uh, it's basically a door like this, and it has a little um, slot here that just fits on top of these little hooks there, and then it drops into place and it locks it so the rats can't get inside, but we can very easily remove any one of these that we want, like so, and access everything inside the bed. It's just a nice way to be able to keep our beds protected uh, without sacrificing the access that we generally need. This is great. This is working really well. It's like you should get to see me struggling. There we go. Boom. Um, <laughs> magic. I'm going to cut that part out and it's going to look like I just seamlessly put it right back on. No problem. And so far, it's been, what, a month since we built these and we have not had a single rat problem. Everything growing in these beds is so lush and green uh, without anything attacking it. And we're getting ready. We're going to start cycling in some more lettuce as soon as we harvest these guys. And yeah. you know what's fun is we, we planted it. We put it right on the back, which is the north end. Uh, the, um, it's the mini honeydew. Sugar, sugar cube cantaloupe. Sugar cube uh, cantaloupe. So close. Mini honeydew. Sugar cube cantaloupe. So they're growing in the north side of the wicking bed. Um, and so they climb against the wire. And so they're going to cover the entire back. And they're not going to block the sun for uh, the salad. So that's great as well. Wicking beds. Yay! Yay. <laughs> you may call them wicking beds. I call them wicked awesome beds. Wicked awesome. Wicked awesome. Can you do a Boston accent with me? 
wicked awesome. Awesome. Wicked awesome. Wicked awesome. <laughs> you use my Charlie card on the T and get some wicked awesome wicked reds. I don't make any difference. Like for me, I don't hear that. You don't I'm hear how <laughs> great it is. Sorry, Boston. Oh my god, what's the frog? Oh my god, buddy. That's gonna be. You got that on camera? <laughs> yeah.